আচ্ছা ক্লাস শুরু করার আগে তোমাদের রোল শিট কোনটা গো এখানে তিনটে রোল শিট আমি দেখতে পাচ্ছি এ ওয়ান এ টু এ থ্রি এর মধ্যে কোনটা কি তোমাদের রোল শিট স্যার মোস্ট প্রবাবলি এ থ্রিটা হবে একবার শো করবেন আচ্ছা শো করছি এটা বি ওয়ান এটা এ থ্রি এইটা তো নয় না তিন দিয়ে শুধু তারা নেই তিনজন আছে এনিওয়েজ তোমরা এক কাজ করো তোমরা চ্যাটে তোমাদের নাম রোল নাম্বার ইমেল আইডি গুলো লিখে দাও So, uh, can you see this screen of mine? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what do you see here? Uh, just... Put the PowerPoint mode. Is it clearly visible? Yes, sir. More or less? Did you see the boost? Yes, sir. Did you see the boost? Yes, sir. Did you see the boost? Okay. So, this particular component is called a stuffing box. And... Uh, what i can what we can do uh, for uh, for this week what we can do is we can try to draw uh, the assembled view okay uh, of uh, of this uh, this uh, you know this uh, stuffing box and uh, um, we would be drawing two views so one would be the top view and the other one is this sectional uh sectional front view that has been shown over here um and uh, if possible we would also try to draw the individual uh, components or the exponent so uh, so i'll i'll explain what are the components in here but before going into that but before going into that uh, if we look at this you would see a lot of components that are there okay so for example uh, there is a stud okay so these are uh, i mean there are a couple of studs that are there okay so basically uh, you might recall what are studs uh, they uh, they are 
uh, one half of threaded fasteners. Uh, so, so they are like uh, so the studs differ from uh, screws in a way that uh, sorry the star, so there are uh, three types of uh, fasteners. So there could be screws. I mean, threaded fasteners. So there could be screws. Uh, there could be. There could be st studs and there could be bolts. Okay, uh, so uh, so bolts do not have. I mean, screws uh, for for the uh, for the entire screw. There would be thread all over its uh, uh, all over its shank. There would be thread. Okay, for the bolt, the thread is uh, only appearing in uh, in the in the some in uh, some portion of the of the body. And for stud, uh, can you tell me what is uh, what is uh, different about studs? From screws and uh, bolts. Muniacha Karo. Amar Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Start Kakebole Muniacha. So for a screw, the entire uh, cylindrical surface should be threaded. For bolt, only a portion of that would be threaded. Uh, so what both bolt and screw have uh, the, their respective heads. So a bolt will have a bolt, uh, bolt head or a screw will have a screw head. But, uh, but the stud doesn't have a head. Okay, for a stud on either side, there should be thread. Okay. Achha. So there is a stud. Uh, um, I mean, there are studs uh, uh, in this uh, in this assembly. And uh, if you look at it, there are a couple of nuts on the top side. So there are different uh, components that are there. So there is a uh, there is a there is a neck. Then there is a gland. Okay. So these are the major components. And for these two components, the material is cast iron. So whenever you encounter uh, any machine component or assembly, the larger parts, which mostly stay, mostly, you know, act as a cover of all the internal parts, they are, they are you know, they are often made of cast iron. Okay, because those parts do not need uh, machining, and those parts are made by casting. I mean, do this, those parts do not need a lot of machining. So, if you look at this external surface, you'd probably find this is a very rough surface. Not, not a lot of machining would be there. So, <clears throat> uh, so there is a neck and there is a gland. Okay, and what are the uh, requirement of those components? For that matter, what is the requirement of a stuffing box? We will discuss in a minute. But I just in, uh, need you to focus on a lot of things that, that are going on over here. Now, if you look at the stud, obviously on one side, you see a couple of nuts there. The bigger one is the main nut. Whereas the second nut is called the, what is it called? Are you familiar with this? This is called a lock nut. Okay, so this gives you added uh, uh, precaution against uh, this main nut coming out of the stud. Now, now again, just like bolt, uh, the stud has only a portion of it being threaded. Okay, although it, it is threaded on either side, but only some portions are threaded. Okay. Now, if you look at the geometry of the stud, you can actually imagine the the way 
this entire assembly has been created i'm not talking about the internal parts but let's just focus on the on the gland and the neck sorry uh, the neck and the gland okay then you can understand how this has been fashioned okay so uh, i have been repeating myself that the star has thread on either side on the top side we can see couple of bolts uh, uh, being you know uh, attached to the thread okay now since it has thread on the other side as well on the bottom side so there should be a nut or there should be nuts uh, uh, you know uh, fastened to those threaded portions as well can you identify the nuts over there on the bottom side of the start can you see any nut because this is also a threaded joint ei part ta bujhe achhe ki bolte chaichi ekta flat part to ache but ta ki nut you see uh, it's not just a flat part this entire component this entire component this whole thing okay that is actually your neck the neck itself acts like a bolt uh, sorry neck itself acts like a nut okay sir so, kunta ke neck bolchen neck bolchi uh, so you see uh, this portion this portion now can you see the cursor yes sir. yes sir yes sir okay so this portion now can you see the red marks yes sir yes sir okay, okay. so so this portion the top portion is the gland which is made of cast iron and this bottom portion is the neck okay so this uh, <clears throat> so if you uh, so this this component is a stud and it has thread on either side so on the top side and the bottom side okay and the bottom side actually directly attaches to the neck itself and the neck uh, actually behaves like a nut over here okay so there is no additional nut which is you know fastened uh, in this side so mm, so directly you have uh, your neck acting like a nut so now if you look at this assembly you can imagine how this has been fastened so at first the stud has to be uh, attached with the uh, with the neck and then this gland you see there is some clearance between uh, so if you if you uh, zoom into this portion so you would be seeing that this is this is the gland actually all you are doing is taking this section over here okay and this is uh, the start passing through the uh, passing through the uh, hole on the gland okay and uh, these lines are actually showing the continuity of the gland so basically it is showing this uh, circular or the cylindrical surface okay so there is some clearance in between obviously there is uh, some thread also being shown on the on the start okay so this is how we show the external external thread will uh, will come to that in a minute so there is some clearance in between so after the stud has been fastened with the 
with a neck over here the gland would be uh, uh, would be you know uh, uh, put on it uh, sliding through the studs okay and once the gland reaches its position okay then we will fashion uh, the two uh, two nuts over there so there is this is the main nut and this is a lock nut these two would be fastened after that okay so this is how the assembly is uh, assembly is done okay but a lot of things are there okay and we'll come back to that in a minute but let's just discuss about what is the purpose of a uh, stuffing box so this diagram uh, this is what i found from the book and it's not very uh, mm, it's it's a schematic diagram it's not uh, uh, very representative uh, mm, but uh, uh, it it can actually uh, tell you about how the steam engine works so this is actually the steam inlet and this is where the steam comes from okay and uh, you are supposed to run this shaft over here this shaft okay so this is called a crank shaft so obviously it is attached to a crank and if you uh, if you do not recall what is a crank crank is a member in the crank slider mechanism or in a crank rocker mechanism uh you probably had one basic course on uh, mechanisms right yes sir okay so you might recall what is a crank rocker mechanism it's a four bar link and the shortest link is actually the crank that you recall right so this is the crank this is the connecting rod and this is the rocker Do you recall that? Sir, so actually, it was on our uh, workshop mechanism classes. So, uh, we have a little bit. Sir, so just workshop we uh, we hit on mechanism at some point. Crank shaft mechanism to both. Okay, okay, okay. We did not have any course as such. Okay, okay. But I thought you were supposed to have a course. Okay. Anyways, um, the reason I am bringing this up so you can understand what's going on here. uh so uh, so if any of you travel uh, by bus uh you'd see how the wipers i mean if you if you uh, sit next to the driver you'd see how the wipers are working so obviously a motor runs a crank so the motor is always associated with the shaft so you can if you look at it from this side okay you'd it would look like this so the shaft is somewhat like this if you look at this portion this actually is your crank okay so the shaft is actually like this okay and if i look at it from an isometric view it's not a very good view uh so if i look at it from this side this is how it looks like the shaft is not uh, a complete cylinder okay uh so where there is the crank okay it is supposed to uh Mm, it is it is slightly eccentric and it forms the crank okay it is because you see this connecting rod that is connected with the uh, with the crank it is supposed to uh, intersect the center line of the crank okay it is supposed to intersect the center line of the crank uh and the only way it can do is if there is no actual material okay uh, along this center line so that that has to be hollow okay so this crank this uh, shaft actually rotates let's say in this direction about its axis okay and as it does so as it does so so as the crank rotates so what we uh, sorry as a shaft rotates so this is uh, this is what we have seen as shaft the you know the complete solid cylinder but imagine you remove some portion of it and uh, attach a u shaped geometry to it 
okay and remove this portion so the shaft ends here and again starts over here there is no atrial in between and then you have a crankshaft okay the reason it is done so uh, let's say as a as a uh, as a shaft rotates okay so whether you have um, whether you have a crank slider mechanism or a crank rocker mechanism in each case in each case a crank could be so this one this part is called a crank okay and if it is seen from this side it would look somewhat like this the shaft to essentially look like a set of concentric circles okay again this is a schematic representation and the crank simply looks like a uh, a small portion going out of the shaft axis okay and that uh, that crank it your uh, crank is connected through again a pin joint okay or uh, mm, yeah so uh, it is connected through a pin joint with something called a connecting rod so this is your crank and this is your connecting rod okay so this connecting rod connects to something okay but then as the connecting rod is connected to the crank and as the crankshaft rotates okay so does the crank okay uh in certain positions of the uh crank or the crank angle so the way we uh, you know track this rotation is by measuring the crank angle so if this is the direction of the crank how much angle does it make with the horizontal that can be your crank angle and certain values of this crank angle this connecting rod would basically intersect with the axis of the shaft okay and in order to facilitate that this portion is kept hollow okay there is no shaft uh, in this region so this crank is actually a protruded part out of the out of the shaft okay ei part ta ki bojha jacche ki bhabe crank ta thake some of you might have actually seen uh, a crank shaft of a car okay uh, maybe in action so uh, so you might be able to relate to that but uh, uh, otherwise can you uh, understand what i am trying to say here ha yes, sir bucchi uh, acha so <clears throat> now two types of mechanisms two types of basic mechanisms that can uh, one formulate are one is a crank rocker mechanism there are many examples of crank rocker mechanism let's say uh, you are riding a bicycle here okay so uh, so the paddle uh, of the of the cycle can be think thought of a uh, crank okay so the paddle can be thought of a crank and the two major bones of your leg can be thought of the two other limb okay so um, so uh, you see as the as a paddle rotates your uh, thigh actually uh, doesn't rotate it only oscillates okay as the rotation goes on so it is a crank rocker mechanism so this part is a rocker and what comes between your crank and your rocker is called a connecting rod okay so whatever connects the two uh, two member are uh, is called a connecting rod okay now uh, if you look at the um, look at an uh, ic engine internal combustion engine or for that matter in this case a steam engine so what we have is a piston okay so that slides in a with inside of a cylinder okay and that cylinder has valves and lot of other components okay and if it is an ic engine then it has spark plug and uh, other components but let's say this uh, this is a cylinder okay and typically this cylinder is connected with an an extended rod which is uh, this this piston over here sorry this piston has this extended rod called a piston rod okay 
and there is uh, no relative motion between the piston and the piston rod you can think of the piston mm, mm, piston and piston rod to be a single component single rigid body okay no relative motion okay and again there you have your crank shaft to which a crank is attached okay and the crank is rotating okay and within the crank and this piston there is a connecting rod so as the crank rotates as this crank rotates okay the piston is only allowed to move uh, horizontally along the axis of the cylinder okay and the connecting rod makes a combination of translatory and rotational motion okay because at one end of it there is pure rotation and on, at the other end there is pure translation if you look at this point okay uh, this uh, this pin joint over here there is only going on a circle so it is only performing a rotation the other side is only moving along a horizontal line okay therefore connecting rod makes uh, a very uh, i mean sorry uh, a superimposition of the two motion so it's uh, it's a combination of translatory and rotational motion okay now this is all this this part of the mechanism is beyond beyond the piston okay and to uh, to the crank shaft there is another uh, mechanism that is at us that is the valve opening mechanism okay so so this there is an eccentric over here that operates uh, this valve uh, so uh, as uh, this bowl shaped uh, component moves to one side it either opens the uh, inlet valve or the exhaust valve okay so what happens uh, the steam enters and then the inlet valve opens okay and the steam pressurizes the piston to move uh, move backwards okay and then uh, because of that the crank uh, crank starts rotating that the crank shaft starts rotating okay and uh, the since uh, due to inertia of this flywheel okay and also the applied load uh, this system uh, keeps on rotating and uh, piston uh, then moves to the other side okay and is as it does so the um, uh, then the outlet valve is open okay and then uh, the steam is uh, you know pushed away of the uh, system okay so <clears throat> see so sir, in this way ha bol bol the last part last part it could be ha so uh, so th there are you can think of there are two strokes i'm not sure how many strokes actually there are but let's say there are two strokes in one stroke uh, the piston opens okay uh, i mean sorry uh, i mean the inlet valve opens the steam enters the cylinder and pushes the piston okay and then the uh, as the piston is moving so the motion can happen in two ways if you uh, run a motor and if you move the uh, uh, move the crank shaft if you rotate the crank shaft okay then this piston will move or if you move the piston that can result into the rotation of the crank shaft and the crank shaft is associated with flywheel uh, and a lot of other inertia a uh, lot of other components that are contributing to the inertia okay so once you push it it starts rotating okay but it keeps uh, keeps on with the rotation and therefore uh, after complete completion of one stroke one stroke is 180 degree of uh, uh, you know your rotation of your crank so uh, so the maximum left position of the piston is when the crank is aligned with the negative x axis okay and from that position because of the steam pressure let's say the crank rotates and moves to the maximum uh, uh, right position which is the uh, which is when the uh, crank is uh, along the positive x axis basically crank connecting rod and piston aligns with the x axis okay so it moves to that position but what happens after that position the shaft doesn't stop rotating so the crank then again starts moving towards the left and as the crank starts moving towards the left so does the piston okay mm -hmm. and and this time the piston pushes the steam okay uh, and uh, and uh, what else is moving because the crank shaft is rotating this uh, this other uh, other mechanism is continuously opening either of the valves 
so alternatingly it is opening either the inlet valve and the outlet valve so in the first stroke the inlet valve was open and the steam steam enter, entered the system and pushed the piston and then in the next stroke when the uh, piston is uh, moving due to inertia so the piston also has some inertia uh, i mean linear inertia so uh, due to inertia piston is moving the other side and it is pushing the steam and it is uh, pushing the steam outside of the system and uh, and uh, and this time the exhaust valve is open ei paper ta bujhe gelo ha sir okay so this is how the mechanism is open now uh, let's uh, come to the point why do we need a stuffing box here we are trying to draw a stuffing box uh so uh, the stuffing box is attached to uh, this this side of the cylinder so the piston is moving inside the cylinder so this uh, so this particular side of the cylinder where the piston is entering uh, the cylinder at that side you need a stuffing box to what to for leak prevention okay you do not want uh, the steam to be leaking out of the system okay so you know to do that uh, you need you need a stuffing box so while the you see a lot of moving components and the reason the you know, the, the piston rod can move okay through the uh, uh, through the through the cylinder is because there is some clearance okay and the steam can escape through that clearance if there is no uh, um, uh, leakage prevention on this region okay the steam can uh, exit this region and hence comes your stuffing box so this uh, so this uh, this portion this neck portion is actually coming from the cylinder ei bar chobi ta ki bojha jacche and this shaft like geometry that you see it's basically is your piston rod which is moving in and out of the cylinder and this bottom portion is actually your cylinder and that, that's why it is shown shown with broken lines so you are not showing the entire geometry we are only showing a part of it ever ki kichu ta clear holo stuffing box er bapar ta sai last ta ekba explain korbo amar kotha shona jacche acha सिलिंडर दिस पोर्सन ओके दिस प्लेट लाइक जियोमेट्री दैट पार्ट इज you know further extend it okay so here the here that is shown like a plate right it is shown like a plate okay through which your piston rod is passing imagine that part is extended and forms a geometry like this which means basically it is a cylindrical portion hollow cylindrical portion so there is a flange you can think of this as a flange okay and then a smaller cylindrical dia okay and an even smaller hole so this this is a flange then this is another cylinder okay and then the actual cylinder through which your piston rod passes and then that attaches to the again i am showing it with a broken line to the actual cylinder where the piston exists ever ki bujhe gelo what part is connecting rod uh, sorry what part is uh, the neck of the stuffing yes. box yes sir yes sir yes sir theek hai sir so this is that portion okay acha what else is there then then you have essentially this so this is your neck then you have this portion called the gland okay which sits on the neck 
and you know following the method that we described earlier we are supposed to attach this uh, knee, uh, this gland over the knee okay but what else is happening what actually is preventing the leakage is this foam like structure this is actually your asbestos foam okay and that foam has to be compressed in order for it to provide so if you have uh, have some foam like geometry okay and if you compress from other side it it tries to expand from this side which is not a surprise right we know that is how the elastic materials behave okay when we try to elongate something laterally it tries to compress but if we try to compress from one side in the other side it tries to inflate okay it's very straightforward right so this asbestos foam is actually trying to inflate and actually try to create additional pressure of any steam that is trying to escape through any clearance that is there obviously there is clearance between the piston rod and whatever is inside so you have this snake and inside this snake there is uh, inside this snake inside this snake there is something called sorry this one is not neck this was this one is the gland and uh, the bottom side is a neck on either of them there are a couple of bushes okay so this bushes are made up made of uh, brass okay so you can see the material is mentioned over here so <clears throat> so this between this bush and the piston rod there is obviously some clearance but through this clearance if any amount of steam is trying to escape this additional pressure coming from the asbestos foam is actually preventing that okay acha uh so what do you see here so uh, again if we now reflect on how this assembly is created earlier we only you know looked at the, uh, the assembly operation in a, in a crude manner now if you really look into the details so at first you have this uh, this portion protruded portion coming out of the cylinder okay which we are calling as neck then we put a neck bush now how does the neck bush look like can you tell me how how is the neck bush you see neck bush is also a cylindrical portion okay somewhat like this okay and uh, and also some inner cylindrical portions are there but you see there is a taper okay you imagine this geometry this geometry revolved so you did uh, you use pepper's theorems right in your mind try to use pepper's theorem for this cross section over here imagine this cross section being revolved about this axis okay what sort of geometry would you get okay so this upper portion is basically going to give you a cylinder with a conical hole can you see this this upper portion is going to give you a cylinder with a conical shaped hole the lower portion is essentially giving you a cylinder with a cylindrical hole okay so try to imagine that geometry okay now this is not entirely flat if i want to draw the cross section there is a slope coming down to it okay डिफरेंट पार्ट 
okay now you can uh, if i ask you to draw the bush can you imagine how the bushes would look like so if i ask, ask you to draw the neck bush and the gland bush can you draw both of them স্যার নেক বুস্টটা পারে যাবে গ্ল্যান্ড বুস্টার যেটা বললেন আরেকটা ওটা আরেকবার টু রিপিট করলে ভালো গ্ল্যান্ড বুস্টটা কি হবে सेमই হবে এর মতই এখানে যে ক্রস সেকশনটা আছে সেটা কি ফুল সার্কেল যাবে সো ইফ দিস জিওমেট্রি ইজ লাইক দিস you simply have to revolve that mone mone bhabar chesta karo je what are the solid what are going to be the solid lines if i were to revolve this this point over here is going to give me a solid line okay i mean if you revolve a point about an axis you get a circle right so you are only seeing the projection of that circle or the semi circle for that matter okay for example look look at this point over here when that point is revolved about this axis you get a semi circle or circle and when it is drawn on this view okay it is going to be a straight line right on a front view it is going to be a straight line just like that same happens for this point same happen for, happens for this point so this is how the bushes would look like okay now you need to refer to your textbook in order for to draw uh, in order for to you know be more clarified about the dimensions over here the dimensions are not uh, that good in in uh, in this photo okay but you can you can look at them in your textbook acha okay so at first you you put this uh, neck bush inside the um uh inside inside the what um in your in your neck okay or which is basically an extended portion of your cylinder so you, are, you put the neck okay then you put the asbestos packing okay then you need to put the uh, gland bush okay and then uh, uh, and you then need to attach all the studs over there then you are supposed to put the gland okay and after that you can you can put the nuts on top of the stud okay and that's when your assembly is complete okay do you understand sir match panel lomba cylindrical thing is that this is the piston rod refer back to this diagram this rod is that component just like the extended portion of this back plate of the cylinder gives you the neck of the stuffing box okay the rod in the center is basically basically this rod from the coming out of the piston we are clear yes sir okay so uh, what you can do is uh, for this week i don't need you to draw the individual components okay uh, what you can do is you can draw the assembly view okay so that should there should be on uh, top view and one front view and use the scale which is suitable for you you already know what sort of scale you can use acha uh what else is there there is dimension 
okay and regarding dimensioning i would like to give you a reminder uh, so we already discussed about how the arrow head should be the arrow head if it is 3 units long the maximum thickness should be 1 unit okay so that we have already discussed acha now about um, about the types of dimensioning so there are two types of dimensioning one is uh, um, unidirectional and the other one is aligned okay which means if it is aligned let's say with this dimension okay if uh, if my dimension uh, i mean if my arrow heads are vertical so i would put the dimension also let's say this dimension is 16 i would put the dimension also vertically but if this is or something like this it should be this one the first one is correct okay because you would be either looking at the drawing from the bottom or from the right okay so the alignment should be correct either as you see from bottom or from right okay that means for uh, this one i'll be putting a no this one is not a fixed dimension okay let's say the distance between these two axes okay of the two studs i can put a dimension on that and that would be horizontal and in that case as if i'm looking from the bottom i should be putting the dimension from over here okay it should be aligned like this this is the aligned way of dimension now obviously there could be some dimensions which are slightly tilted okay uh, if uh, if one particular dimension is uh, is about uh, is making an angle okay with the vertical or the horizontal then then also you can use the align system in align system it should be such that you can read it as if you are looking from this quadrant okay bottom right quadrant okay so if this dimension is 100 it should be like this okay now what happens with the unidirectional dimension in unidirectional dimension we would be reading all the dimensions from the bottom side even for the cases where the dimension itself is along a tilted line there also we would put a dimension like this okay and in that case what we would actually do is we would put the dimension in the middle of the dimension line okay so keep that in mind what else is there now there are two more things one is uh, the section section views okay and the other one is uh, the other one is your threaded joints okay i mean for this drawing these two concepts would be important for us okay obviously we will not be drawing any thread like this okay there are certain ways of representing a thread okay in engineering drawing we will be taking help of those methods should so not be trying to draw the actual thread okay like a helix so here is an external thread and here is an internal thread and this this surface is obviously without without any thread so this surface has some clearance with the stud 
Okay, so I made few other slides uh, just to uh, go through uh, all those details. Okay. So in this slide, we are looking at different types of section drawings. The first one is a full section. Okay, each of you are they large enough? So look at the first drawing. Okay. In the first drawing, what we are drawing is a full section. Okay. So so the plane that we are using, there is not some way uh, making an angle. Okay, this is just a single plane. Okay. So, uh, so if I were to draw the top view, okay, of this geometry, so, uh, so imagine this one. So you, this, the section is taking plane, taking place over the this entire plane, okay. And uh, if I were to divert, let's say from the middle. On a, another perpendicular plane, okay, then that would be a half section, just like this one, just like the second figure, okay. And the second figure also shows how the full section and half section should be represented, okay. So, uh, look at this component over here, uh, the first diagram is the half section and the second diagram is the full section okay and the third diagram is without any section is showing the the solid geometry and it is showing all the um, in with the hidden lines with with the help of dashed lines okay so for example, this square hole is invisible. So it is showing with hidden lines. Uh, this Then this cylindrical hole over here. And all of these are being shown okay, with the help of hidden lines. Please also notice that these two square holes are also represented through this set of hidden lines which would not be present in the full section. In the full section, we are not showing, okay, either this or this square hole. We are simply showing the cylindrical hollow portion, okay. And in the full section, we are not showing any hidden line, okay. And also, there is a way to represent the plane that gives you the full section okay. so this pt plane i hope you can understand that it is essentially this center line but then the p and the t end of it is uh, slightly thicker you're supposed to use the thick lines for this one essentially representing the PT plane. Okay, so you take this plane. If you show this cutting plane, then you would be showing this section of the view. Okay, instead, if you choose to show PR section plane, and how is it represented? So when PT branch off to PR, there is another thick line representing that right angle turn the angle need always need not be right angle but let's say that right angle turn is there so that turn is represented through another set of thick lines and then if you have this pr cutting plane 
this is the view you are supposed to get okay i'm sure you already know all of this but the reason i'm mentioning this that you keep in mind while you draw either the full section or the half section and that i'm leaving up to you to draw a full section or half section for the stuffing box in the front view the section would not be in the top view the section would be on the front view okay so i'm just letting you choose that acha okay so <clears throat> so please note that this is required when you are drawing the half section or representing any form of turn in in the cutting plane ei part ta ki bojha gelo ei part ta kono issue ache sorry sir can you just repeat once uh, the difference between half and full section half and full section okay so <clears throat> look at the full section if i take this plane bb that is completely cutting the whole geometry okay on the right side there is another plane let's call it pr so that plane is not completely cutting i mean let's say this first of the half of the plane okay that is cutting anything which is at the top of the center line and this side of the plane it is cutting anything which is in the right of the center line okay let's call this in the center line zz so to the right of the center line and to the top of the center line okay the sections are shown but to the left and to the bottom the sections are not shown okay and <clears throat> and the side views okay let's say this is the front view and this is the side view so the side view is shown okay for a half section with only taking section of the half of the plane so only the first half of the plane up to the center line so this center line is again zz so up to the center line the top half of the plane the plane is infinite right but only the semi infinite portion of the plane that is whatever is above the z axis zz axis so so that semi infinite portion of the plane is used for taking the section and obviously if i were to look at the geometry from top also currently i am looking at it let's say from the after taking the section i am looking at it from the right side hence i am drawing the view on the left side okay so we are doing a lot of uh, first angle uh, projections over here so currently i am looking at it from the right side so therefore whatever section has been taken i am plotting it over here in the left but if i take if i take a projection or if i take a top view okay i'll be able to see the section on this surface which is not currently visible okay and in that case it would look somewhat like this so for this portion there is no section i'll show some of the hidden lines and the center lines okay and uh, also this hidden lines for the square hole but for this portion so it is supposed to be oh okay but for this portion i'll be showing the section that is when i'm drawing the top view okay so <clears throat> so so i have two semi infinite planes meeting at z axis and i am taking section with respect uh, with the help of th those two semi infinite planes and that's why it is it is a half section okay is it clear now yes sir 
अच्छा एंड दिस इज एन एडवांस वर्जन ऑफ दैट हाफ सेक्शन दैट वी डू हियर व्हाट व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर टेकिंग मल्टीपल सच टर्म्स सो देयर इज वन टर्न ओवर हियर another turn over here so this was the mm, initial plane right so you see on on the center line there is no thick lines over here i hope you can see this the thick lines only appear whenever there is a change in the orientation so that happened over, over here 1 2 then 3 4 okay just because i wanted to show the section of this hollow cylindrical portion or cylindrical holes over here okay and at the two ends of the cutting plane so this is your aa cutting plane so here you have a thick line here you have a thick line and wherever there is a change in the orientation there you have a thick line on either side okay making a right angle in this case so <clears throat> so this is just some advanced version of that uh, uh, half section where i'm repeating the process i'm changing the orientation multiple times okay actually four times to be precise so there is another way of representing section and this one you might be familiar there are times what we do is uh, let's say for uh, uh you have a you have a large fly wheel okay and and let's say this is the rim portion of the fly wheel and in the center you have the half and inside the hub there is a hole for you to attach the shaft okay but then how the hub attaches to the you know uh, to the rim with the help of a set of spokes so those spokes are usually of elliptical cross section i'm not draw uh, able to draw it very you know uh, correct way so let's say there are multiple spokes and these spokes are not cylindrical they are not tip, uh, conical okay all i am saying saying you okay so the cross section is not circle so this cross sections are elliptical okay and how do you represent that in a single drawing okay you see even if i change a view first of all changing a view is not necessary because for most part of the things the hub and the rim okay uh, they are basically cylinders so changing a view doesn't give you additional information but even if i wanted to revolve it and to do an uh, additional exercise of drawing an entire uh, different view just to show the cross section of the spokes that doesn't seem uh, you know efficient in terms of how much effort you are putting instead what you can do is you can simply draw the cross section on this view itself what is means is that you have taken this section on this plane let's say this cutting plane over here and then you have revolved that section to align with the original plane itself okay and then you are showing the section in this case it's a, a complex version of a i section okay is already shown in the in the view in which you are not supposed to see the cross section it has been superimposed on that one okay so that is called a revolved section okay so are we clear up to this is there any question कथा शुना जाके so in this view 
this is actually going to be important for you uh, is where we are drawing uh, different uh, the uh, sections for different types of holes okay so uh, first two are the these two are the um, the drilling holes okay so basically these are the holes uh, created by drilling okay one has gone through and through of the geometry uh, the other one is uh, uh, is internal so it has not gone uh, completely through the geometry through the component it has stopped uh, uh, somewhere inside okay and this is how you are supposed to represent that okay so please note what part are you supposed to shade and what part you are not okay the next two are the uh, the holes that has been created by boring okay so 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 there is a step in the uh, step in the cross section although both uh, so both segments are cylindrical so in inside of the hole there is a smaller diameter portion and also a larger diameter portion okay so in the uh, mm, so this this portion so imagine uh, how it it would look like from the top view or let's say an isometric view so i'm draw partially drawing the component okay so let's take the third diagram so where you have your larger cylindrical portion okay and let's say this much extends to the geometry and internally it is uh, it is a larger cylinder that then that then reduces to uh, smaller diameter okay so that you are drawing over here okay so if i were to draw the section along a plane like this which cuts the geometry over here okay so this is the larger diameter and this is a smaller diameter portion so i'm drawing only the that portion of the geometry which intersects with this plane okay so i'm only shading that portion which intersects with the plane so i'm not showing any shading uh, the portion which is not intersecting with the plane for example this cylindrical surface or uh, this uh, flat surface which lie which lie uh away from this plane which is not exactly intersecting with this plane cutting plane therefore i am not showing the shading on them okay now for the next part Okay. So the next diagram is uh, is where you have change in pro, uh, diameter, but that is a kind of taper. Okay. So here you we are using uh, countersunk pole where we are trying to. Uh, so originally there was uh, the smaller diameter cylindrical portion, and from one end we are trying to increase the uh, diameter. Okay. That also is very similar to the. the other views okay uh 
now the next one is where we are showing the internal thread and please note that we are showing the shading inside of the threaded region i mean to the depth of thread okay how much is the uh, depth of thread up to that portion we are showing the shading okay and we'll come to this uh, when we are showing um, an assembly where the the so obviously this is a portion of a theoretical knot okay because knots have internal threading so even uh, even the uh, neck portion of the stuffing box is essentially a knot so it that has internal threading and when you are drawing the shading of that when you are individually drawing the uh, the neck let's say okay. so you are supposed to you are supposed to draw that shading of uh, the section inside the so we when, when you are doing uh, drawing this neck stand alone then also you are supposed to draw them passing uh, passing to the the thread portion okay and when you are showing a bolt and a knot assembly or a stud and then knot assembly so i'm referring to the neck as a, as a knot over here so there also you are supposed to show the shading inside of the threaded portion okay so do keep that in mind so if you do not draw the shading inside of the threaded portion that is an incorrect drawing okay so with that we we can conclude the uh, shading portion uh, please let me know if you have any queries regarding this थ्रेडेड there may be a change of cross section or maybe there is uniform cross section throughout the point here is that whatever doesn't intersect with the cutting plane we are not shading okay for example look at this portion for this portion i have drawn the isometric view okay so if you cut it the cut the geometry with the plane what you see is intersecting with this plane has been shaded okay this is the plane of cutting so this is the plane in which the cutting is happening okay so what i'm doing here is if uh, this is your geometry okay so whatever doesn't exist on this plane i uh, is not supposed to be shaded that's the point okay so now if you're looking at it from this side from right side you'd get the front view of the section and what do you see having the shading so if i if i draw the shaded portion that would look something like this and then you are supposed to put the shading on it on it what about the remaining part remaining part you draw just the way you draw a, a projection without any section okay you understand that how do you see if you look at from the uh, right side how do you see this uh, this circular arc over here or does this semicircle over here you will simply see it as a straight line so just draw it like that same applies to over here and same applies to over here and that and on that if you put center line that concludes your section of view eta bujha gelo ha sir okay just when you have a thread an internal thread or 
are not in bold assembly and you are drawing a section first of all when and you are drawing a not in bold or a not in stud assembly you never take the section okay you might have heard about this you do not take the section of small components so uh, or slender components so that's why we didn't take a section of the shaft or the piston in this case okay or for that matter of the studs we are not taking the section of the studs we are not taking the section of the piston rod over here we are taking the section of the components that are not slender which means they are white okay so we are taking the sections of them and when we are drawing this sectional view obviously this threaded portion is also a part of the stud okay but i am not taking the section of the stud then then the confusion arises because uh, we are supposed to show this shading up to the region of threading for an internal threading which means i am supposed to draw the shading on the thread for a nut but for the bolt or the stud i am not supposed to draw i am not supposed to draw a sectional view but then there is an exception only for the threaded region you are supposed to show the shading okay that is the point i am willing to make here bujha gelo i mean obviously when you would be drawing i know uh, you would be you know simply looking at the view that sectional view that has been drawn and you would be simply copying it okay uh, with correct dimensions but i need you to be aware of what you are doing okay that uh, this is the reason why you are you are supposed to draw the shading on the internal thread or for the matter a nut and bolt assembly every time you draw a nut and bolt assembly or start and uh, nut assembly okay uh, you are and drawing the section of it you are essentially showing the section of the nut okay and as the uh, shading is shown on the thread of the nut or the internal thread therefore you are supposed to show the thread even in an assembly okay acha mm, one more thing for you to notice that there are different materials for for example the piston is mild steel and i believe the stud is also mild steel and same applies to the nut okay and for none of them any section is shown it's not because of their material okay the, the reason the section is not shown because there are there there are they are smaller uh, uh, you know objects okay considered to be smaller objects uh, we essentially do not draw the section of a shaft section of a nut okay uh, or a or a bolt or a stud things like that okay if you are drawing a quarter joint we do not draw the section of a quarter okay if there is a pin we do not draw the section of a pin but for the remaining items for which we are drawing the section okay please also note for the foam we are also not drawing any section we are simply drawing it okay uh so uh so the other components for which we are showing the section okay the shading type is also important the shading type only changes with the material so it is a cast iron there is one type of shading if there is brass there is another type of shading and i guess although the gland and the bush are both made of cast iron okay there has been a change in the type of shading over here you see if one of them makes an angle of 45 degree the other one actually makes an angle of 135 degree okay same applies to the two bushes over here okay the angles of the shade are 90 degrees apart but uh, the spacing is actually a uh, signifier of the of the material that has been used okay so please keep some of these things in mind okay and when you try to draw uh, the hatches uh, it shouldn't be like this that initially you started with very uniformly spacing very tightly spacing chains uh, i mean hatches then you were impatient or you ran out of time and suddenly the spacing started becoming much larger it shouldn't be like that okay uh, 
it should be proper what i'm saying next to the threaded joints okay acha ei obdi karo kono question ache ar so uh, in the threaded joints uh, so the first diagram is for the external thread okay and please see how it is not represented with actual threads okay so the the actual helices would uh, be looking like a sinusoid okay if i were to actually draw the thread on a cylinder so it would be essentially like a sinusoid okay so, but it's not like that okay only uh, the depth uh, so what we are trying to represent here so uh, we are trying to represent the depth over here okay and uh, we are representing the uh, the end tapering and also the initial machining that has to be done before the threading starts okay so all only the representative uh, representations are used uh, uh, instead of the uh, showing the actual thread okay we are not actually showing the thread so what we are doing is uh, we are showing uh, um, uh, so some of the representations okay now we are showing the length of how, uh, length how, of how much thread that has been there okay and this is how the thread is represented let's say this is m12 which means that uh, the d0 diameter is 12 mm okay and uh, and you will find the specifications of the thread for example the uh, the inner diameter should be around uh, 85% okay you can you should check from the textbook how much it actually is okay of d0 okay the core diameter okay and uh, and then uh, this angle at the end is about 45 degrees okay which means uh, if it is 15% uh, of the radius you see if the core diameter is 15 85% uh, of the the external diameter that means uh, this this thickness is actually 15% of the radius not diameter but radius okay so this height is also about 15% of the radius and then again here the angles are uh, uh, 30 degree and 60 degree okay so accordingly you are supposed to draw them. okay so you would be mentioned you would be given the total length of the thread and that is actually from the uh, very end of the uh, bolt or the stud to to the interior where uh, up to which the thread is there okay so initially you are supposed to draw these two lines this line and this line okay and then all the other lines are supposed to be drawn and how is it represented uh, the again the d0 is 12 mm so that has been mentioned over here but before that one letter is used uh, which shows it is a metric thread okay and whenever Uh, the manufacturer sees there that representation. He knows every other specification. Okay, uh, what should be the pitch? What should be the um, depth of cut and everything else? Uh, the manufacturer should. Okay, acha. And this is how the internal thread is represented. Okay, as we mentioned earlier, the threading actually uh, goes inside of the. Uh, sorry the the shading actually goes inside of the threaded region as well okay so it goes up to the core diameter and uh, uh, before threading as you can see uh, the the hole has been drilled through the through the nut okay uh, so um, so the drilling operation is represented like this and after drilling the threading operation has been done okay so uh, so if i were to sequentially represent the the sectional geometries so initially it was uh, the internal or core diameter okay that is how the machining is done with the 
uh, internal thread. In inter, uh, in uh, internal threading, at first the core diameter has to be machined, okay, and after that the outer diameter is machined in the form of threading. Okay, at first it would be a drilled hole, and the remaining portion would be shaded. Next there would be your threading operation. Okay, and that itself is uh, these two lines itself uh, should be a representation of the threading. Okay, and your shading goes inside of the threaded region as we discussed earlier. Achha. Okay, here are uh, a few more things about uh, external threading. Uh, if you have square threads, okay, in our example, uh, today's example, there is no square thread, but we might encounter square threading in some later situation. Uh, possibly when we will be drawing power blocks, there will be having square threads. So when you have square threads, uh, this is how you represent that. You see, the drawing itself is not different, but how you specify a uh, square thread in uh, uh, in metric system is itself is an indication uh, for the manufacturer that what sort of thread must be there. Okay, and uh, these are the alternative representations for the V thread and the square thread. Okay, that you will find from the textbook. So, um, so this is our usual way. This is how you do it. And there are some alternative ways to represent. So we have uh, earlier we saw the V thread, and so this, these are the alternative ways to draw the um, internal and external V thread and square thread. So now you'd go back to the drawing of different types of knot. So this is our hexagonal knot. Okay, uh, this is the type of knot that you have seen in the uh, in the details of the stuffing box. Uh, so how the drawing uh, works okay so the uh, so the uh, okay one more thing so once we are drawing the external thread we are drawing uh, on the on the uh, let's say on the side view or on the top view okay in case of your stuffing box it would be a top view Okay, so if you look at the start, let's say from the top view. Okay, so this uh, start over here. If we look at it from the top view, this is what we would be seeing. Okay, uh, there will be a complete circle. This is how you are supposed to represent it. Okay, complete circle which shows the external diameter. Okay, or the D zero. Okay, and. Uh, and the internal diameter of the core diameter is not represented with a full circle but a three quarter of a circle. Okay, I'm sure you already know this, but I'm just repeating for you to recollect. Okay, and the same thing for an internal threading has to be done in an opposite way. So the, the core diameter is the full circle, and the outer diameter is a uh, three quarter circle, representing that uh, that this is actually the, the boundary of the solid geometry. Okay, so when you look from the top, this is what you would be seeing. You will not actually be seeing the threads. Okay, but uh, but this uh, the uh, external line, three quarter line, representing the thread, uh, is is actually representing the thread that is inside. Okay, because it is an internal thread. Okay, so remember in this case the internal diameter is is the D zero. The uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry the the external, uh, sorry, the three-quarter diameter is the D zero, and this smaller uh, uh, diameter portion is actually the core diameter, which is around eighty-five percent of eighty-five percent of the D zero. Okay. Now that D zero or D is actually the uh, uh, is uh, is the characteristic dimension of the of the. Hmm. Of the hexagonal knot, a lot of other dimensions can be uh, obtained often from that. For example, the thickness of the knot can be taken to be D itself. Okay, 
and uh, if you use a little bit of geometry you know that uh, this w is around <clears throat> so each side of the hexagon each side of this hexagon is also t okay that is the uh the uh, uh, the the outer diameter of the pole for the matter so each side is d which only tells you this this width is supposed to be around 2d okay and then w uh, if if you use a little bit of geometry you know that it is going to be uh, root 3 times d okay and here you have some formula for that as well uh then uh then when you are showing not the top view by but the front view of it you are supposed to show the chamfer with a 30 degree angle okay so so in that case this is going to be your uh t by 2 this is going to be your d and this portion is again d by 2 okay but uh mm, and you already know the thickness is t now from this point take a distance of r how much is r about 1.4d okay so take that distance and make a circular arc and wherever that intersects these two sides okay these two sides from that point okay so so join those two points okay and make a horizontal line now this is only a construction line we're not supposed to draw it as a solid line so that extend that line and wherever that line intersects the other two vertical lines okay use uh, use your free hand drawing you don't have to use a compass or anything just use free hand drawing to draw the circular portions remember the circular portions are supposed to be tangential to this 30 degree chamfer that is at the two ends okay so uh, this is the standard dimensions okay and these are the rough rule dimension which will go by the standard dimension itself okay so there are two drawings that are shown here next thing is uh, if you look at the nut from the side view this is what you are supposed to see supposed to see w you have already figured out how much it should be so this length is going to be w and the thickness itself is d that we also have discussed so far okay uh, and uh, you will get this depth from the earlier rule that we said from the from the front view so you are supposed to take r to be 1.4d from the uh, from the highest point over here and from the draw circular arc and wherever that intersects this to this to vertical lines spaced at d by 2 and d by 2 from the axis of the uh, nut so from those two you will get the uh you yeah, okay from that intersection point you will get the depth of this portion and that is also depth of the chamfer okay in this view as well the side view as well and for all the uh, locations over here okay and simply uh, you can use the free hand drawing of joining the middle portion and these two portions to draw the side view of the nut okay and this slide is our last slide this is regarding the uh, the, uh, the square bolts we will also encounter a square bolt possibly in uh, in pama block so uh, uh, you will also find a, i'll just simply share this slide with you and you will find the details of the um, the details of the square nut over here okay uh, mostly the things are very similar you only have to look through the uh, specifications over here to find out what sort of radius and what sort of thickness and what sort of chamfer angle are you supposed to take the technique however is very similar to what we just did for hexagonal nuts so you can start drawing the assembly view of it okay and in the next week we would uh, we would work on the uh, individual components
okay uh, or uh, we can draw the detailed view uh, in the next week uh, so you might encounter some confusion uh, so uh, so we can actually uh, discuss it over mail or uh, on the next class itself we can discuss uh, any uh, any confusion that you have with the with the detail view uh, so you are supposed to submit both the uh, sorry uh, any confusion that you have with the assembly view so you are both supposed to submit uh, both the detail view as well as the assembly drawing uh, in uh, in two weeks from now okay uh, on the next week itself we can do a doubt clearing session for the assembly view So, do you have any any uh, question regarding uh, what we discussed today? No one has a question. Okay, in that case, we'll uh, meet on the next Saturday and uh, we'll continue from here.